Hey there, welcome back to the MVArch channel. In this video, I wanna show you a technique for making a perfect looping factory. You've probably seen these trends around where small factories are making all kinds of things. Uh, so yeah, the main focus for this is the conveyor belt, of course, because that's the means of transportation in this animation. In this video, I also want to show you a way to fix a deformation mistake that is made by using a curve and an array modifier. More on this later. Uh, in the end, we will be using geometry nodes to add some variation to the conveyor belt system. Right, without further ado, let's get into the video. So as you can see, I have set up a layout here for my factory. So I wanna start from this point, so cursor to selection. I wanna create a plane. Go into edit mode for this plane and say Alt M to merge and merge uh, at center. I extrude this vertice to somewhere in the distance, right along here. Uh, and I make a path that I think is nice for the conveyor belt system. And I have to move something to out of the way. Uh, then I go back into edit mode and select the vertices that are corners. I use Ctrl B for bevel and hitting V you can bevel the vertices. Uh, in object mode I'm going to bring it down and snapping it to the corner of the floor. Yet again, I'm going to add in a new plane. And this plane is going to be the base of our conveyor belt. So I'm going to model a basic shape for the conveyor belt by extruding out the plane. And now I'm going to insert some extra edge loops. I'm using bevel to spread them out over the mesh. Extruding up the side pieces. And removing the front. And also I have to remove the back face as well. So there you go. I do this because if we're gonna array this later, then they can merge seamlessly. So speaking of, I'm gonna add an array modifier. Now I want to go to the curve, I select the curve and I say convert to curve because it's now a mesh. Then select this mesh again and add a curve modifier and in the curve object, choose the curve you just converted. Make sure you have enough resolution in your mesh because the corners will deform more smoothly. Now all left to do is fill out this curve with the array modifier. So I'm gonna go up to 13, I believe. Yeah, 13 will do the trick. So in the end, when I was certain this is the shape I wanted, I went back into edit mode after applying both modifiers and I just modeled the curve a bit more smooth. With that said, let's move on. I am gonna select the curve and say cursor to selection. I wanna add a new plane right there. Go into edit mode for this plane and shape it to resemble a cycle of an individual belt. I like to make individual belts. If you want, you can make a whole belt loop from start to finish, but I like to distribute a couple of belts over the whole circuit. And as you might have noticed, I do this a lot. I convert back and forth to curve and mesh. Uh, that's why I added it to my quick menu. So with the shape in place, I'm gonna add an array modifier and yet again a curve modifier just as we did before and choose the conveyor belt curve to fill out this line with individual belts. Make sure you have enough resolution in your mesh because the corners will deform more smoothly. I'm gonna remodel this a bit, scale this in, move those two bits in as well so that the corners will fit more easily. Right, fill out the line again. As you can see, you can't apply an array modifier when it is a curve. So I'm gonna convert this back to a mesh. Like you see now, it's a mesh. And in edit mode, I wanna separate by loose parts. So I wanna go out of edit mode. I wanna control Z to get my selection back and say convert to curve. Now I wanna say set origin to center of surface. And there you go, we're back in business. To make the actual mesh that is going around the cycle of the belt. I'm gonna select this one and say cursor to selection. And from that point, I'm gonna make a plane. I'm gonna shape the plane so it fits inside the conveyor belt system. Add a curve modifier, go back into edit mode and give it a bit more resolution. Right there. Now what I'd like to do is add an array modifier, move it up on top. And maybe you notice this as well, the merge option doesn't work, but this is because the curve modifier is applied after the array modifier. So the array modifier doesn't notice that these two are actually next to each other. And over the x-axis, I'm gonna scale it up or down, whatever it is in your case, and I'm gonna match it up as best as I can. So we matched it up as good as we can. 
So I'm gonna fill out this conveyor belt with the actual belts, just like we did before. So we can use this initial curve we made, the conveyor belt curve. I'm gonna duplicate this and I can drag it up so it lives on top of the conveyor belts. Um, go into edit mode and as you can see it's still a curve so I have to go out of edit mode again, convert this to mesh. Into edit mode and from the top down I can easily create a cyclic curve, connect the last two vertices right there and convert this back to a curve. I'm gonna rename this to close circuit uh, and then the name of your object, whatever you like. I'm also gonna make a new collection, animation curves, and move it to there. I make another plane and in edit mode, I'm gonna select these two edges, Alt M and say collapse. Now we just have one single line. I'm gonna subdivide this edge um, 10 times maybe. And I quickly rename this to distribute product. In object mode, I add a new modifier that is the curve modifier. And for the curve object, I'm gonna select the closed circuit object curve. So I go into edit mode and I scale up this, this edge and it wraps around the original curve. Trying my best to line it up exactly. I wanna select all and say subdivide because the amount of subdivisions you have here, the amount of vertices, I should say, that is gonna resemble the amount of products you have on your conveyor belt. And now I'm gonna select this vertice, that's the wrong one, but I'm gonna hide it, select the other one and delete it and unhide with Alt H. And there we have it, we have our production line. So I'm quickly gonna make a dummy product and it's just gonna be a sphere that's halved and filled on the bottom. And of course I made a collection for the products. So I'm gonna select the closed circuit, the distribution product and the product itself and say isolate. In isolated view I select the product, then I select this line and parent them together. Now I select this line, I go into the object tab, to instancing and to vertices, and now we have duplicates. I say shift S, cursor to selection. Now I select the product and say shift S, selection to cursor. So you might be asking why would you go to all this trouble? Uh, let's see a side by side comparison. And I highlighted the corners so you can see it a bit better, but these are the parts where there is some deformation. Depending on your case, you either want that or you don't want it. And in the new method, you can see that it just follows the line. So I'm gonna duplicate this closed circuit curve and I'm gonna give it some depth. I will move it to its own layer and I deselect the render ability so it doesn't show up in render. In the viewport visibility, I'm gonna say, just display it as a wire. I'm gonna convert this to a mesh. I select these two edges press V to split it off, and then use the island selection to select the middle part and delete it. Now all I have to do is fill out these holes and we have a nice Boolean mesh. Once again, I'm gonna select all of these and isolate the view, select the product, and I'm gonna clear the parent for now because we're gonna use the geometry nodes to distribute this again. In this case, we're gonna add some more variation to it. So I'm gonna open up a new window I'm gonna press Shift F3 a couple of times so I get into the Geometry Node Editor. And from here you can see you have two nodes and in between there I'm gonna create a Point Node, a Point Instancing Node. I'm gonna to switch to Collection and choose Product. Now, I'm gonna choose the product and I'm gonna duplicate it and slightly tweak it so it just is a different shape. And now we have two dummy products. I'm gonna uncheck Whole Collection and then I'm gonna search for randomized attributes. Right now it's set to float value, but I wanna change it to vector so I can have individual control over the rotation. For the attribute, I say rotation. This is very sensitive, so mind your spelling. I'm gonna bring back these two to zero. And you can play with the settings, whatever you want. I saw that as of now, the Boolean in the geometry node doesn't work, but I just added a modifier version of the Boolean and that seems to work quite nice. Be mindful, uh, this is quite computer heavy. And lastly, but not least, I isolated the distribute product. So what I do is I set my 3D cursor right there so I have an indication of where the starting point is. On frame one, I go to X and I set a single keyframe. And now to the end of the timeline, frame 250, I am gonna drag this line forward, line it up and press keyframe. 
I'm going to delete these two. Bring this more into frame and you can, if you like, say times two times three right here in the X value and keyframe this and say all channels right here. So you just update the keyframes for the channels that are actually set. Um, what I'd like to do, because we now have a Bezier curve, I want a linear motion because it loops more seamlessly. Otherwise you have a weird acceleration and deceleration in the, in the beginning and you don't want that because mechanical things are usually linear. I don't want it to be so fast, so I'm gonna divide by three again. And this is my looping animation, as you can see. I got a bonus tip for you right here. For me, this scene got a bit heavy. So what I did is I selected the distribute product. This is the mesh we had the geometry node applied on. After that, I searched for big and I said object animation, big action. I already did that, of course. I made a new file just to be safe. So I had a backup and I exported this one to there as an Alembic file. So you select this, go to file, say export, Alembic, ABC. I made an ABC folder as well. And as you can see, I have multiple ABCs right here. So yeah, there you have it. Nice. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, leave a like. If you did, leave a comment down below. Do you have any questions? Let me know. Check me on Instagram if you want to show your work done with this method. As always, stay creative. I'll see you next time. Ciao.